Hey guys, what's up? This video is brought to you by Linode. If you guys are looking to set up your own server, I recommend this company because they're very easy to use and they save me a lot of money. As you can see in this demo here, you have all kinds of different flavors of Linux that you can choose to install on the server. You can set up where you want your server to be located. They're located all throughout the world at this point. So find a data center that's close to you and set it up. You can also have dedicated CPU plans for any sort of high-end processing, or if it's just basic web development or even just exploratory, they have $5 a month plans. So make sure you guys check them out. The link is in the description tab below. Hey guys, what's up? Good evening. So in this video, what I want to talk about is the, the best programming language to learn in 2020. And this one is going to be a little bit different. There's a lot, you know, like a lot of uh, YouTube videos out there, a lot of, uh, it's kind of a clickbaity subject, I'll admit. And for some reason, YouTube just eats it up. But in this video, the reason why I'm going to change it is I've actually done top 10s, and um, I'm just going to simply say the best language that I think that you should learn in 2020, uh, and, and there's a few reasons why. I'm just going to go over them right now. All right, guys, so most of the lists that are out there right now, they're telling everybody to learn JavaScript, right? Everybody's like, oh, JavaScript, you're going to get a job. You can learn React or Vue or Angular and all this stuff, and the reason why I'm actually saying that in 2020, I think C Sharp and .NET is the best language to learn. And I said the same thing last year, but uh, if you guys could just hear me out on this. For starters, C Sharp is Microsoft's language. It's their flagship language. They have a ton of products that deal with everything from uh, gaming, servers, databases, just software apps, like pretty much everything um, that is considered to be software. Microsoft has some sort of piece in it, even with cloud computing like Azure and all the tools that are used for agile planning, uh, agile methodologies, things like uh, what used to be called Team Foundation Tools is now DevOps. Um, but they also have a market cap, which means how much the company is worth of $1.33 trillion. So they're, they're a humongous company. Now, one of the reasons why everybody tells you to learn JavaScript is they're like, well, React runs on JavaScript and Vue and Angular and all that stuff. But the thing is, is like when you're first starting out, you probably shouldn't learn any of those things. You should be learning vanilla JavaScript. And if you're going to do web development, you're going to be learning JavaScript anyway. So it doesn't matter if C Sharp is your primary language or Python or PHP or Ruby or any of that stuff. Even Node, you're going to have to learn JavaScript. So while there are a ton of jobs in the web world, one of the things that sucks about that is that if you're a JavaScript developer, you're writing user interfaces. That's for the most part, unless you're writing a Node.js backend, which is relatively unlikely in the corporate world. You're going to simply be a one-trick pony. You're going to be a UI developer. Now, the thing is, is you can do really well in UI development. That's actually my specialty. It's something that I do mostly is just, you know, writing JavaScript and deal with a lot of Node and, and, and React and all that stuff. But, like, it took me a long time to get to that level, and I'm sort of pigeonholed into that in the corporate world, even though I can do other things, and I've actually written a lot of C Sharp. But um, one of the things that I think makes C Sharp better than JavaScript is JavaScript is all about this flavor of the week stuff. So right now React is hot, but before that it was uh, Knockout. Before that it was like Backbone. Before that it was jQuery. Um, but there's always some sort of flavor of the month thing that you have to learn. When it comes to C Sharp and Microsoft, though, C Sharp is uh, it's on like version eight, I, I believe, at this point. But the thing is, is that the fundamentals of C Sharp, while it's very difficult for a beginner to just jump into it, especially when you compare it to Python or Node or something like that, C Sharp doesn't change like every time the wind blows in a new direction. The core of C Sharp has been fundamentally the same thing. You can write actual software applications that are installed on Windows machines using WPF and, or even WinForms, and that stuff goes back damn near 20 years at this point. So these languages and, and these ways of, that Microsoft has of doing things, it rubs a lot of people the wrong way because it's so it's such a Microsoft C Sharp type of .NET way of doing things. But the benefit is that it simply doesn't change with the wind. So I've worked with people in the corporate world for 10 years now who are writing the same backend services in C Sharp, and they haven't paid attention to any of these flavor of the month JavaScript things, including even jQuery. And they're still just as highly paid. They're people that have families, they have lives, they go to work every day, and they come home. C Sharp is also all-encompassing, so you can write video games in it. This is something you cannot do in PHP or Python um, or even Node. Like, you can do base-level games that nobody's going to play, or you can make literally AAA titles that use something like Unity Engine, and it's all written in C Sharp. 
Now, technically, the core of the engine itself is written in C++, but you're writing C-sharp to script all your applications together. You can also use C-sharp with some of the latest tools. So say you like to use Visual Studio Code. Well, this is a uh, project here that is written in Unity, and I have a Unity tutorial that's coming out, but like, you can see this video game that I'm making right now uh, is all written in C-sharp. So this is something that, once again, Python doesn't really have the option of doing. You, there's things like Pygame and stuff, but it just doesn't, it just doesn't work out very well. But you can see this game is like a Flappy Bird type of thing. It's really terrible. This thing fires an arrow every five seconds. Essentially, it's a crappy game, right? But I'm just getting started. And the thing is, though, C-sharp allows that to be possible. Now, as far as web apps are concerned, something called ASP.NET is like the standard of Microsoft web development. So if you have a web development job, you're going to be using ASP.NET. Again, with ASP.NET, even with .NET Core, the fundamental architecture of this has not changed with the wind. It hasn't changed multiple times. There's really one de facto way of doing web apps in C Sharp, whereas if you compare it to something like Python, people are like, Flask is better, Django is better. People are telling you to use Tornado uh, or these other up and coming, you know, they're like, oh, you need to use Falcon. Like, there's all these different things that are competing within the same realm, and none of them have a big corporate support when it comes to actual jobs. So when we look at actual jobs, a lot of people will tell you, okay, you got to lose, you know, learn Python, but Python jobs are all about data science for the most part. There's hardly anybody in the corporate world using Django when you compare it to like a, a Java Spring framework or C Sharp.net uh, with ASP.net. But here, if I just simply type C Sharp, there's 32,000 open listings. Uh, if I type .net, I'm going to get a bunch of other stuff, um, which is at now almost 60,000. And then you have um, you know things like ASP.NET. There's all these different versions of, of .NET that are out there. So just simply ASP.NET is 8,000 jobs, .NET Core. If you combine all of this stuff together, then C Sharp is most definitely right up there with Java as the most corporate development jobs that are in existence right now. Now, I know that certain areas of the world, they don't have as big of a .NET presence. So I'm not saying that you know those types of people should be learning that, but there's many other reasons to learn C Sharp, even if uh, that's not going to be something that, that you actually want to do full, full time. Like I said, even if you just want to publish a game just to help your, um, you know, your resume, to pad up your resume a little bit, C Sharp is going to be a much more, a better option for you than I think even Java when it comes to video games. Uh, but all that said, I think that if your specific geographic area has no .NET presence whatsoever, then clearly this video doesn't really apply to you. So while Microsoft isn't usually the leader when it comes to uh, building the latest technologies, it seems like a lot of times Microsoft's not coming out with like the brand new stuff like TensorFlow, which is huge, and machine learning came from Google. But they also have their own wrappers that also do the same things that things like you know PyTorch does, which wraps around TensorFlow. Microsoft's version of that is ML.NET. Now for those that are trying to get into uh, WebAssembly, like the new bite-sized code that's going to run in the browser that's much faster than JavaScript. Microsoft is working on the Blazor platform right now. So again, the same style of C-sharp type syntax. It just simply, it, it, it goes across broad spectrums much more than most other languages out there. And I think ideally, if I had to say the number one reason why this might be good for beginner developers is C-sharp is, some people say it's Java done right, but um, it, it, it will... It requires that you write sound applications. It requires that you learn about uh, static type checking and uh, compilation. And it's not this, you know, dynamically interpreted duct typed environment. I know that that probably rubs some people the wrong way, but essentially what I'm saying is that things like TypeScript, when you're starting to do web development, was made uh, in basically C Sharp's vision. It, it was something, it, it's now something that's being used just as much as JavaScript. It was created by the C Sharp creator, which is Anders Helsberg. Um, but it's all about static type checking. C Sharp teaches you that. So like, if you jump into something like that, although it's going to be a much bigger learning curve, this is something where you're not going to be competing against every script kitty that comes out of a boot camp like every three months. You know what I mean? Like, not a lot of people can hang with the C Sharp environment. So if you're able to get up to that level, then you really have a ton of options, and including even branching into other languages like Python and Node and all that stuff. People will tell you that C-sharp sucks because it's difficult, it's Microsoft, 
But the thing is, is like the older I get, the more I realize like I'm not trying to have to relearn stuff over and over and over again. Plus, I want to be able to learn something that applies across broad spectrum. So I'm glad that I've been doing C Sharp for roughly 10 years on and off. But um, I wish I did it more day to day because I've just been in JavaScript for like the last like five years, like 24-7. All right, so there's also a lot more reasons to learn C Sharp these days than any time in the past, and that is because of .NET Core. It's their runtime that now runs across um, all the different environments, which includes Mac, Windows, and Linux. Even Visual Studio, which used to just work on Windows, is now working on Mac. And granted, it's not the same type of product. It's something, it's, it's at least a start. If I were going to be doing C Sharp on a Mac, I'm just simply going to be using .NET Core with VS Code, really. I'm not going to use Visual Studio, the product. But that said, if you're on Windows, then video, Visual Studio is literally like the flagship standard of how an, an integrated development environment should be built with tons of tools for like unit testing, for hooking the databases, for analyzing um, your code, for even putting breakpoints and all that stuff. Like this stuff like existed long before Visual Studio Code, but uh, Visual Studio itself is what I'm talking about. So if you're on Windows, you're going to find a lot of corporations are using Visual Studio because some of the other tools that are used for actually building uh, software, you know, using uh, things like the Agile methodology is using different tools that just go right into Microsoft's products. So you're going to find that you're not going to have to also have so much of a headache. Like once you actually spend the amount of time to learn these tools, they integrate with a lot of these other like flagship products that Microsoft has that a lot of corporations are using right now. So this Azure DevOps tool is one of the things that I'm talking about right now. It's actually all built into the cloud. But if you guys have ever done like uh, Bitbucket or used uh, Atlas in products, like with Jira for, for task tr tracking and things like that, it seems like everybody's either, either using Jira with you know Confluence or they're using Microsoft with the, the Azure DevOps, which used to be called Team Foundation Tools. But this is how programmers are tracking their time. They're tracking what work is going into certain builds. It's about continuous integration, continuous deployment. Uh, again, just uh, and that's a lot with you know to do with unit testing and things like that as well. It's just there's a whole lot that goes into like the building and deploying your code base to different environments and trying to figure out what was changed, who worked on these builds, and all this other stuff. All right, so one glaring weak spot with Microsoft technology is in the mobile market. They tried to come out with their own phone, which was a pretty big failure. And after that, they bought Xamarin, which was a uh, cross-platform way of writing your mobile apps in C Sharp that then transfers over to Android and iOS. So very similar to something like React Native or what Flutter is doing. This is C Sharp's version of that. So again, even if these things aren't like the leader of the pack, like you can see some of these big companies, like obviously UPS is a big company. Uh, they're using these these tools and, and they're actually used in production environments. So while people may not be talking about Xamarin these days as much as Flutter, it's not like you don't have an option. If we compare it to something like Python, people will say we'll use Kiwi, but Kiwi is nowhere near like what Xamarin is. And it's certainly nowhere near what Flutter is. Like it just it's not even even remotely close. And it's the only thing Python has. So for all the Python people, it's like you're never going to build an app like what UPS has that works on Android or iOS with Kiwi. It's just, it's not going to happen. And again, if we go back to the games, I mean, look at some of these games that have actually come out for Unity Engine. I mean, some major games that even like Nintendo is doing, their stuff like it ports to Android, iOS, also things like uh, Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and... Um, yeah, just, I mean, even Call of Duty Mobile, which is one of the bigger mobile games that are, that is out this year. So lots of options that you have when it comes to C Sharp. If you wanted to stick to web development, you can make major applications like Stack Overflow is completely .NET. Everything from SQL Server, uh, IAS for the web server. Um, I think they use like, uh, I don't even know if they use like Entity Framework, which is an object relational mapper for your database, but... The fact of the matter is this is all ASP.NET, it's all Microsoft stuff, it's all C-sharp, and it clearly is a, a huge website. Now, another thing, too, you guys might be talking about, if I build something, will it scale? And although not my preferred over Linode because it just costs a fortune, but like if you are like a major corporation with a ton of money and you want 
specific Microsoft support and like seamless integration, especially if you're using old school Microsoft, like uh, the .NET framework before .NET Core, then you have the options of also deploying to the second largest cloud provider behind just Amazon AWS. So that gives you the options of being able to scale it across the world. But with .NET Core, you can now install that on Linode. So I've actually done that on my uh, own Linode web server. That was something that wasn't possible five years ago. So you guys are probably asking me if I'm getting paid by Microsoft to say all this stuff, and I'm actually not. What I'm actually waking up to is the fact that I've had a lot of fun working on Unity lately. And I'm also just... I'm just a little bit tired of the web, maybe. So I'm thinking that like my next direction is probably maybe to get back into just C sharp uh, development, just because I like the the I like the ability of having one language that literally ports to just about everything. And um, I don't think that JavaScript fits that bill. JavaScript means that you're basically building web user interfaces. 